In this tutorial, we're going to cover how you would go about setting up your site and locating your building using shared coordinates so that you can plug in the context model that I'll provide. So we will establish a base point and then establish a survey point based on the information I've given you. There'll be a DWG file that we're going to use for this exercise and then we'll do some basic setup of that specific building. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is start a project. So start a new project using our template. So find our template, go and find your template files. So go and find where you've used your template. So start the project using your template file. Okay, this is important. If you want to plug this information into the contextual model that I'm going to give you, you will need to understand how the survey point and project base point work. All right, we'll start on this landing page, but remember this is drafting view. I would recommend that you go to your site view first. Okay, in your site view, you're gonna have two icons in the middle of the screen. So the one, the circle is gonna be your project base point and the triangles, if you press tab and you hover, will be your survey point. So you always wanna work around your project base point, which is this round circle. So let me just use VG, visibility graphics. Okay, so VG, visibility graphics, will open up the visibility graphics, but if you go to view and you go to visibility graphics, so basically if we go right down to site and we, so here, project base point and survey point. So let me just switch off the project base point for now. So this is the survey point and it tells you it's a survey point. Okay. Now, if I go back to VG again, visibility graphics, and I go back down to site, and I switch on project base points and switch your survey points, you'll notice the two differences. But just remember the project base point, if I move this point, all of these views associated, everything associated will move because this is the project base point. So if I move this point, in essence, I'm moving the whole project. So be very careful when moving this point. Okay. All right, and this northeast, east, west, all of this is referring to the survey point. So it's reading data from your survey point. And you'll see once I move the project, this information will start changing. Just remember, north, south is your X and Y. So east, west is X negative to positive. Okay, northwest is Y negative to positive. Okay, so that's all that they mean. But it, it makes more sense if you're looking at a north point so you're going from east to west. Okay, so that's all that it's referring to in relation to the survey point. All right, so now let's just bring everything back. So go to VG and we're going to switch back. So visibility graphics, site, survey point. Okay, all right, now that we've established this, the next thing we need to do, we need to bring in our site information so that we can start modeling our desired building. So you're going to go to the insert tab at the top. And on the insert tab, you're going to go and say link CAD. I prefer using the link CAD option just because it won't pollute my drawing with a whole lot of unnecessary information. If you use the import CAD option, you run the risk of in polluting your Revit project with a whole lot of unnecessary data. So in this instance, I'm just going to use link CAD. Now I'm going to go and find this, that file location. So this is the file that I would have given you. Okay, so you're going to go to, go and find this information. It was in central developments and it was the site link drawing. Okay, it's all been set up. Just remember with units, make sure you want to use millimeters. Make sure that it's millimeters. And I'm going to leave everything else on because I would like to see this in the view correctly. And I'm going to just untick this and untick that. Okay, level zero. And here I want to bring it in. Um, origin to internal origin. Press open. Okay, now the internal origin of that AutoCAD file will now match the Revit's survey point. So that's important. Okay, now the zoom out. And you can see this is looking good. Here are my elevation markers. And here's my Revit link project. Usually when you link an object, you see this is pinned. 
we'll need to unpin this and start moving it to the right location. So go and find the building that you're going to be modeling, because I know some of you will be doing this building over here. Some of you will be working on this building over here, or this building over here, or this building over here. Doesn't matter what building you're going to use. Okay, this is a party wall. I'll explain that later. But for now, I'm going to focus on this little building over here for the time being. Okay, so I need to move this building. So pick a corner that works for you, either the back of the building or the front of the building. That doesn't really matter. I can see there's some inaccuracies at the front here. So I'm going to use this point at the back. Doesn't really matter as long as you're trying to work as close to the project base point as possible. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this link file and I'm going to unlink it. Or, uh, sorry, unpin it so that I can move it. Then I'm going to select this link file and I'm going to hover over the middle and I'm going to tab. So select this file and this tab. So tab over the project you want to get the survey point and press control and select the survey point as well. If you go to the filter now, you'll notice you'll have the survey point and the AutoCAD link both select. You're going to press OK. Now you're going to move the move icon. So I'm going to say move. I want to move this whole project. So this is my building I'm working on. I want to move it from this point and I'm going to move it to my project base point. So zoom in and you're going to snap right into this point over here. Okay, now that I've got my project base point in the correct location, you'll notice that this information has remained in exactly the right place. Okay, so and our survey point and the AutoCAD drawing will set it, share the same location. That's very important. Okay. So they're all going to be sharing this location. Right, so we'll leave it there. Okay, fantastic. Now that we've managed to do that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to start setting up our project correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do now is go to Manage. Manage, and you're going to go to the Project Setup. So go to Location. And here you just go and find Pretoria. So if you go to Site or Location, Go and say Pretoria, Pretoria, South Africa. There we go. Okay, it's found Pretoria. Now you can use the map. You can actually zoom into the map. And you can go and find the actual address of the building. But I'm happy more or less where this is located. I can just drop it over there and press OK. All right, I can leave it just there. That's not a problem. Okay. Now, once I've established that, the next thing I need to do is I need to rotate my project, my view. So ideally, I want, so if I go to my site view, here you're going to have two types of views, Project North and True North. Okay, at the moment, True North is, and project, is, project North is not set. So make sure that Project North is active. Pin this object now. So pin this link file so it doesn't move again. Now I'm going to go and create a construction line or a reference plane. Select this tool. Now I'm going to use the pick line tool and I'm going to select any of these walls. So I'm going to pick this wall over here. Press space bar to end the command. Now I'm going to drag this point up. Okay. You'll notice that these will never change angle. That's what I like about these construction lines. Yes, you can move them left and right, but they'll never lose their the angle. Okay, now that I've established my project north, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to manage, I'm going to go to position, and I'm going to go to ro rotate project north. Now I'm going to say align selected line or plane. You've got these different options if you know the exact degrees, but I'm going to use this align. And you can use this as well. If, if there's text and different things, make sure that you can maintain, you can maintain text note orientation during rotation. So you've got this option as well. But for now, align, and you're going to select this plane over here. Press OK. So now we've set up our project north. True north. Okay, if I switch this back, so true north is this right location, and project north will be in this right location now. Okay. All right. Now that I've got and set this up, the next thing we need to do is just start getting some basic information set up to start drawing and reproducing the plan that you're going to be working on. Okay, what you can also do, just remember, if you're using a link, this will come in 3D, so you can keep jumping between the views. You can go to level zero now. 
Now I can start focusing on the area where I'm working. So I'm going to get the, my level zero established. Remember, we're going to start giving these names shortly, but for now, it's just it's about getting your project set up. Okay, I'm going to switch on crop view. It should, and I want to crop. So I want to crop this view. So I just want to focus on the information. So I think of this as a viewport, except it works in model space. Okay, now I'm going to crop and work around just the information that I'm wanting to work around. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that for now, because there's some information that I'm, I might need to bring back. But I'm just going to crop and get rid of the unnecessary information for the time being. Okay, so this is enough information for me to start working. Okay. We'll move these elevation markers shortly and get them in the right location. You can see they're a bit skewed, but I'm going to need some walls in that first in order to make these work a lot better. Okay, so level zero. Okay, so let's go and start setting up some basic walls. So if you go to architecture and you go to the wall tab, now we're going to go and work through the wall properties. And you can see currently we've got these preset walls in our project. So let's just go and measure our wall. So just click anywhere in the view. There's a measure icon at the top. If you don't have it here, you can go to modify and you can use the measure tool here. Works very similar to an AutoCAD. Just measure any wall for the time being. So this wall, 230, 230. Let me guess this should be a 115 wall. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just need to fix my wall styles to make them work. So I'm going to go to walls. I'm only going to pick my 110 wall and I go to edit type. Now you're going to have an existing wall and a proposed wall. All right, so here I'm going to go and say rename. I'm going to call this a 115 wall. Okay, I'm going to go to edit and here I'm going to change this to 115. Now that I've done this first part of my exercise, I'm going to duplicate this wall and I'm going to put in ex at the back meaning existing press ok now on the course full object i'm going to change this to this gray that we used in autocad this will start matching with a lot of what we've done in autocad then the last thing i need to do is i'll need to go into the material option and i'll need to duplicate this masonry brick wall so duplicate this wall and make this a ex existing material all we need to do now is go to the graphics section and change the cut pattern from a brickwork to a solid gray. So if we go right to the top, solid fill, and we leave the color exactly the same. Press apply. Okay. All right, so that's our first wall established. Fantastic. Press apply. Press OK. Now I'm going to go and find my 220 wall, edit type, rename. 230. 230. Now all I need to do here is change that, leave that exactly the same. Press OK. Press apply. And now I'm going to say duplicate and change this to EX. OK. Change that to gray. Press OK. Now Press apply, go to edit type. Here I'm just going to change this one's material to existing, which is this beneath it. Press OK, press OK, OK, press apply. Now we've created our additional walls that we're going to need. Now the last thing I need to do is go and measure this cavity wall because I've got a feeling this is a cavity wall of some description and it's a 390 cavity wall. So it could either have a 220 external skin and then a cavity. It depends. All right. So these things work differently sometimes. Let's just double check this wall. I've got a feeling this will be the same. So this is slightly different. This is a 450 wall. It's not exactly 100% accurate, but I've got a feeling it's going to be a party wall. And we'll see. Let me just see the front here because I've got a feeling it's two cavity walls that have been attached to each other. So it's a 230 wall with a cavity, then another 230 wall. So we're going to make that a 230 wall in essence. Okay. So we've got one more wall, so I'm going to get this, and it's an existing wall. So it's a 390. So here we're going to go to walls again, wall, edit type. I'm going to say duplicate this one. I'm going to call this a 390. Machine wall existing, and I'm going to go to edit type. I'm going to call this 390 for now. Press OK. All right, fantastic. Press apply. Okay. Now that I've got and created my walls, 
the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to start tracing. Just start tracing this information so that I can start getting my um, project set up. Because once you've got walls in place, everything else will start working a lot better. So go to your wall. I'm going to do my external walls firstly. So if, an external, if I'm using an external wall, I'm going to use my face, core, interior, or exterior, up to you. All that this means is a wall's got an interior side and an exterior side. So I'm going to say core, face, interior, because then it means if I drag along the interior of the wall here, you'll notice this is my 390 wall space bar. Okay, so maybe let me do this wall first if I've got this wall selected, so I'll keep dragging. So here's going to be my first wall in place. Okay. And let me just do that again. Let's go to wall. This time I'm going to select my 230 existing wall. Now, this wall is going to work from height and it's going to be constricted to level one above. I'm going to use interior face again. I'm going to select from here. Spacebar will switch it from what side it is, which side is interior and exterior. So I'm going to put it over here and then I'm going to drag this because technically this, I've got a feeling that this is a 220 wall, then there's a slight cavity, then there's another 220 wall with a neighbor, where the neighboring wall starts. Okay. I can see that there's something happening here where this is an internal shop. Okay, so it doesn't quite make sense what's going on here, but I just think it's not well drawn. But anyway, if this is your building, leave it exactly like this. Okay. Now that I've got my walls established, just go to my 3D view and just see what's going on. Now, because this was set to the level above, you'll notice that they'll only go up to the level above. Okay, but just start setting up a shell. Okay. Let's, not, let's start putting some internal walls in. Okay. Here I'm going to say core center wall center line now if you hover over these existing CAD walls you'll notice that Revit's intelligent enough to find the into all the centers of these walls okay sorry I didn't wipe through two walls there if you want to repeat the last command if you want to repeat an object select the last drawn object right click and say create similar and then it will repeat the same Type of settings here. Yeah, we've got a column, so stop here. Spacebar ins command. I can pull this back to here. Hold shift down, it'll lock it on an axis. So your X and Y ortho snap, so let's create similar. Hold shift down and then lock it to the edge. Escape. Escape ends that current command and you can continue so escape just ends that current command that you're in or shift down slap to this face over here escape command still active shift remember these are going to be columns in this location so you won't necessarily want to draw you actually want to put columns in those locations and that's one thing i'll quickly show you how to do as well so let's pick this face from here to here Shift again. And then here's another column. Okay. Now let's go and load. Let's go and load a concrete column. Okay, so we're going to go to insert tab. We're going to go to load Autodesk family. Make sure that you're working with English and United Kingdom and you're going to go and find structural columns. You're going to go and find concrete and you want concrete rectangular. So concrete rectangular and you're going to say load. Now you're going to go to architecture. So concrete columns and structural columns, you're going to load a structural column. Now you see it's got your rectangular column loaded. Now just be careful, you don't want this depth, you want this height. You want this to be height. Just place a column anywhere for now. We're going to rework this information. So here's my column. Okay, switch to my line weights. So you can start seeing a line weights take effect. So here I've got a column, but now I need to go and measure these columns. Okay, so I'm going to go to my measure command. Measure this column very quickly. So that's a... Four seventy by four seventy column. Okay, so I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to say edit type, 
duplicate. I'm going to call this a 470, 470 by 470. Get rid of that. Press OK. Here I'm going to change this to 470, 470. If you use a rectangle column, you're only limited to one direction, so I prefer using a rectangle column. Here I'm just going to go and change the material, so go and find your concrete material, concrete. I'm going to duplicate this, duplicate, because remember new concrete will be different. I'm going to call this existing, and here this I'm just going to change this to solid gray. Press OK, press apply, press OK. Okay, these work differently sometimes, so just make sure that you apply that. Now you're going to move this column in the correct location. Once you've placed in the column, select it, and what you're going to say, base point will be zero, and then this point over here, you're going to change this to level one and make this zero. So it'll be ground from ground to first floor. I'll go to 3D view now. Now you see I've got my concrete columns and I've got my walls in place. Okay, I'm just going to put my concrete columns in place, and then I'm going to stop there. That will be the end of this tutorial. So let's just copy this information from here. Snap end, use SE to snap things to, that's how your snaps work. I'll explain that in a second. If you go to manage and you go to additional settings, it is snaps, click on snaps. Here's all your short commands for your sets. So it's like AutoCAD, very similar, but here you go SE to snap to end. You'll get used to how these work, okay? So grab that again, so use the copy command, select the object. What's nice about Revit, when you select an object, the modify command ribbon will always open up, copy. So SE, force it to snap on endpoint, SE, that's it for now. So those are my columns, and you can see the line weights differ. Right, so let's copy this last column. Okay, good. With a column, column, column. Okay, good. I'm not going to worry about the internal work for now because I'm pretty close to ending this tutorial in any case. All right, now the last thing we've got left to do just to make this work a bit better is because our project base points over here. Okay, if I go to VG, I go to site, I'm just going to bring up my project base point just so that you understand what it's doing for the time being. Just remember, I know where this point is, so I don't need it on all the time. I'm going to go to project base point. Press apply, press OK. OK, put your base points it's in the right location. Good. Now, I'm going to temporarily switch off my hatch. I mean my crop. I'm going to move these markers in the correct location. So I'm going to put this one over here. This is important to get set up right in the beginning, just so that going forward, you, you, you know where these things are, because they're going to help you set up your levels. OK, they do have a big role to play with regards to setting up levels. Okay, and an eleva elevation marker is made of two things. It's made up of this um, option which will allow you to change the direction of the elevation and then it's got an elevation marker. Okay, so there's two options. So it's this one is the elevation body itself and then this is the elevation view. This is the view icon and then this is the elevation um, icon. Okay, but you're going to grab the elevation icon because they always, they linked. Move this to the front and then this one I'm just going to move this one to the right location okay oops move this information and put it in the right location good put this over here now i'm going to switch on my crop again so switch on crop and i can start reducing the size of my crop now that i've kind of fine-tuned this information good okay one's missing at the back here so let's just switch it off for the time being i'm not crop it was here. Ah, it's just because this line. So grab this line as well. So these are linked. So that is always linked to this line. So grab this line. This is the extent of the view and what you're looking at. And you see at the moment it's all skew. It's skew. It's not actually looking at the right information. So in essence, this is where the elevation starts from. And the, and the other marker, and we click on this, this icon is how deep you're looking in the elevation. So you can control how deep you look. Okay, that I'm going to move as well and put this over here. Okay, good. Right, now that I've done that, pull this back on, switch that back on. You can switch this off for the time being. Okay, now you're going to select this elevation marker. Now you see it's got this rotate tool. Now you need to orientate this to the correct view. Now if I click on here, you notice that this line would have changed. 
Now it's changed and looks a whole lot better. Let's look through the whole project. Likewise with this one now, grab this rotate icon. It'll snap in line with this wall. Ideally, that's what you want. And here I'm going to move this information and put it right over there. Grab this point over here. So grab the elevation head itself. Okay, then I'm going to move this information, pull this. Grab this head, rotate it. Okay, then pull this into the right location. Okay, in essence, if I snap on these views, it's taking me to my north, south, east, west. Okay, so just remember, we'll discuss this in class, but in essence, if I move this arrow into the building, this will in essence become a section. So if I go into here, it will act like a section. So you don't want that to happen, okay? But here we can start setting up our levels. Okay, here I'm just changing the extent of them, the way the, the way they work in relation to the building. So that's important. We're going to start setting that information up. Okay, you can see the end of these points, these 3D extents. Once you set up two or three of them, the rest of the views will start following suit. Good. You can see everything slowly coming together. Okay, let's go back to level one. And I'm going to move this elevation out of the wall just so it's in the right location. So technically, I'm standing from here looking in that direction. Okay. So in essence, we've kind of got to start. We've set up our building in the right location. So we go over here. Here's a project and here's our survey point. So all of your projects will have to have this exact same point set up in relation to your building, just like I've done it here. Okay. If you want to stitch all of these buildings together, you're going to use this survey points every time when you're linking in other project files but we'll do another video on how we start stitching this together but for now this is how you're going to set it up and you're going to start modeling on your building just remember in the site plan technically it's a bird bird's eye view down okay then one last thing we can do is we can switch on wireframe mode so we can see the extent of the line work behind and what i like to do is i like to select this this um you can select this AutoCAD file just in this view. You can go to VG, Visibility Graphics. So remember, View, Visibility Graphics. This is how you can override and control the way elements look just in this view. This is not for the whole project. So here's my site link drawing. I can select all of this bit of line work. I can select everything in here. I'm going to select all of the layers that are part of that drawing, and I'm going to override how they look. Basically, I just want to change them to a color that I can recognize easily so I'm going to change all of this to color and I'll make this a red line. So it's easy to spot when I'm working on them. Press apply, press OK. Now you can see they've all changed to red. So it means while I'm busy recreating this information, I can literally draw over this AutoCAD file. This is a very common workflow. It hasn't changed for the whole project. Just remember, because I've only overridden this information in that view. OK. All right. So here I've got my double click and just select a bit of wall. Double click again, it'll zoom to it. So now you can start as you're building your model, you can go and see this model in context to the AutoCAD file. Okay.